You are now listening to the sounds of Mood Swing Music Group. Hey, yo, what's up, man? Welcome back to the channel. And today what we're going to be doing, man, is working on the MPC 2000 Excel, man. And what we're going to be doing, man, is taking out the old zip drive, and we're going to be putting in one of these new GoTech system drives, man. You can use a thumb drive or flash drive on. So, uh, man, let's get started. So right here, man, yeah. So years ago when I redid my MPC and put the... Uh, zip drive in there man. I had to rewire it because the zip drive got a four pin power connect on it so I had to take the floppy drive connect out so what I'm doing I took this old Dell computer I got man and stole the connector off the floppy drive so that it'll work on the new uh, GoTech and yeah here and right here man I'm just taking that baby apart man you see me taking the screws out the bottom of it you don't need to take the screws out of the, uh, just need to take the front two screws out of the side of the case and then take all the screws out the bottom, including the four screws that hold the uh, zip disk in, zip disk drive in. So yeah, man, right here, as you can see, I'm, I unscrewed it and got it all apart. And now what I'm doing, I'm taking all the connectors off. And, and actually, this uh, zip disk drive, man, it got a larger connect. I don't remember how many pins it is, but the actual GoTech used a 40 pin, and this was a little more than 40. I don't remember if it was a 54 or 48 pin or whatever, but it uses a 34 pin on the, on the uh, GoTech. And the problem with that is I did not have a 34 pin connector because the one on my Dell computer was a 33 pin so i had to stop the process man and contact amazon right here man, i'm looking at the power on it how it's hooked up so you got a five volt on the ground that's the only power you need running to it So right here, man, I'm making sure that my uh, connector actually fits onto the GoTech, the one that I took off the Dell computer. And I'm just making sure that it fit and everything and it, and it connects the right direction so that the power in the ground is hooked up on the right one. And right here, I'm just getting rid of those other two uh, connectors on there that runs to the power supply of the computer. Yeah, I cut those wires off and I'm going to probably yeah i'm gonna take those and tape them up and get it nice and clean so that we don't have anything arcing or anything and right here man i'm just taking some electrical tape I, yeah i'm taking some electrical tape and i'm gonna uh actually seal that off where i cut those wires off so that we don't have anything with any possibility of arcing and messing up the mpc 2000 xl So I got that all together, man, and as I was working, that's when I found out I had the wrong ribbon cable. So I had to stop the whole process, and man, I had to get on Amazon and order a 34-pin ribbon cable. But right now, I'm just getting everything prepped, so when I come back to do it, when the ribbon cable get here, I'll be ready. And right here, man, we back a few days later. And we got the ribbon cable in, so now it's time to take this baby back apart because I put all the screws back into it so I wouldn't lose anything. So now it's time to take this baby back apart, man, and get it done. So I got my foam to flip it over on his face so that I don't damage the uh, front of the uh, MPC or damage any other knobs or buttons. And man, I'm just gonna start taking this baby apart, man. Same process, man. Just get that baby, take it apart, and let's go. As you can see, man, my MPC is clean. Uh, I mean, super clean. I bought it in, I think I bought my MPC in 1999. I think it was like the end of 99, man. I hadn't had it all that time. And like I say, man, it's in great condition. I've never had anything happen to it. I've never had to get it repaired for anything. It's never been broken, any of that stuff, man. So I'm proud of myself for that. Like like always, man, I tell y'all, man, I try to keep all my equipment like new because you never know when you may have to sell something. 
You know what I'm saying? So you just never know, and all this stuff keep its value, man. Because right now these these go these go anywhere between about six hundred and about twenty five hundred online if you're looking at a nice one. So you still get a nice chunk of change from. And as you can see, that's my new ribbon cable that I got from Amazon. And actually, I got that from Amazon, man. And it uh, I have a link in the description, but I got that from Amazon, and it cost maybe five dollars or something like that so it's really cheap and i and they made a mistake and put two of them in my package so i bought one and they put two of them in the package so i got two of them for five bucks so i just put the other one up and right here man i'm i think i'm gonna get ready to uh prep and get the uh power supply situated for the uh for the go tech and once i get this power supply on here i'm gonna you know i'm gonna take and uh strip these wires down get them twisted put some wire nuts on them and uh get that baby ready to be connected man so i can actually put the go tech in this is a really simple process man and on that go tech it comes with uh it comes with two jumpers on it and basically what i did i took both jumpers off and i only put one jumper on the front two that says mo I, I think i read that online somewhere man the front two that says mo so i didn't have to do anything once i put it in man i didn't have to format nothing it just worked i mean and i'm happy about that man because it's normally man you kind of go through a little bit you have to format this format the 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 thumb drive and all that stuff just to get it to work properly man so you know it worked out for your boy man i just i had minimum work to do man and right here you see me man just prepping the wires and stuff getting everything ready to be connected man like i say it's a super easy project it's not hard at all it's something that you can do you got a couple hours on hand and uh yeah man you just let it flow you know what i mean but this is some of that work i be telling y'all about man so what i'm in the process of doing right now man i'm getting my analog side of my studio set up finally man so when i first redid the mpc as you saw on some of the on one of the previous videos i i found out that my zip disc was sticking and it was the zip disc was getting stuck in it so I knew at that point I really couldn't use it. So I just been waiting to get me one of these Go-Tex, man. It ain't been like high on my priority list, but now I'm ready to start doing, getting back into sampling and getting my analog gear set up, man. So this is part of me getting all my analog gear set up. I pretty much got my MPC 4000 set up. And right now, man, I'm on the market for a, a, a Kai S3000 XL or S3200 or either I'll, I'll take a s900 or a s950 or s5000 or s6000 i just need more sampling capability man so i can run some 12 bits so it's gonna it's gonna get interesting man in the studio man coming up in the future man as you can see man i'm getting it all connected right here everything's working out my uh 34 pin cable came through snapped right in right here i think i put it together upside down so i need to pull it back apart so that i can flip the drive over mentally i forgot that i had the drive the the mpc upside down so i was doing everything backwards so i just gotta flip it over i gotta unhook it so i can flip it over and slide it in there no big deal like i say man it's a real easy job on a on a on a difficulty scale one to five man it's like a one i mean it's not hard at all it's a real easy task to take care of man and once you do it I mean, it's a wrap, man. As you can see, right there, I flipped it over. Got my power cable about to slide in there. Boom, it's a wrap. But I think right here what I did, I forgot to set those jumpers, so I'm going to pull it back out again after I get it all in here. But, I mean, it is what it is, man. Like I say, man, technically, if you got everything that you need to do this with, if you got the drive, you got the 34-pin cable, and uh you got the right power connector already in yours this probably take maybe 10 or 15 minutes man of your time to just put this baby in there 
and I'll be having some videos coming up, man, where I'm doing some sampling and saving some samples and stuff on here, man, just so y'all can see how it works, man, and see how efficient it is. But I really wasn't mad at the zip drive, but when I looked at the price of getting a new zip drive, it was more feasible to get this uh, flash drive, this GoTech flash drive, because it just didn't make sense, man. Like, first of all, the zip drive is old technology, and people selling them used and they want way more than they should be wanting for them so i was just like you know what i might as well buy something brand new something you know kind of up to date as up to date as possible but i i still think i'm gonna go with a different one i just went ahead and went with this one because it was the one that i knew i could put right in and it would be programmed but i think i'm gonna get eventually i'm gonna get a different one and put in here man it's just to get me started because I'm ready to start doing some analog work, man. So that's just what my mission is right now. So I'm doing whatever it takes to get going. And as you can see, man, my MPC don't have the eight outs on it. I have had it for over 20 years and I've never really needed the eight outs. I mean, and I've done tons of work. I think this MPC, man, I did a bunch of albums on it. I did a bunch of work for other artists. I mean, I did... I mean, I, I know for a fact I did hundreds of tracks on this MPC, man, and tracking them out in Pro Tools and Logic, and I ain't never really been hard-pressed to have the eight outs. I mean, to be honest with you, if I catch them at the right price, I'm definitely going to buy them, you know, just for, just for the sake of, you know, upgrading my MPC and having it, you know, full-blown. But the only thing I ever did to it, man, was the memory and put the zip drive in it and i've been running man ever since just you know keeping that baby up so and right here man i'm taking it out like i told you i realized that i didn't do the jumpers on it i was about to seal it up and thought about it like i didn't change the jumpers around on it so it probably wouldn't have worked anyway so right here man i'm taking these jumpers off it's two jump it comes with two jumpers on there and uh I had to take I had to take both of them off and then reposition that last one on the on the slot that says MO on that first slot that says MO. And then once you do that, man, you you home free, man. And this baby basically replaces your it's to replace a floppy drive. So it's a floppy drive emulator. And what happens is, man, it makes it seem as if you got 999 floppies which is cool, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm just going to do a bunch of sampling with it. I don't really need to make full beats and tracks and sequences and stuff on it for real, for real, even though I do some light work on it. But I am I leave all the heavy, heavy work for my uh, MPC 4000, man. When I start getting into the heavy stuff, the 4000 is the tool of choice, for real. Because really, when I get... I want to get this beefed up, man, so I can really match it up with one of those other samplers I was talking about earlier, man. Something real slick, like a S900, S950. Really, I want the S3000 Excel. If I could find one of those for a good price, because right now, man, they're about five or $600, and I don't feel like I want to pay that much for something that came out in the 90s, even though I know it's, it's well worth it. I mean... I'm just hoping at some point, man, you know, the price can drop a little bit to where I can feel a little better about spending that much money on a 30-something-year-old PC equipment. So, yeah, man, right here, job complete, baby. We just we just putting him back together, man, and uh, we're going to get ready to fire him up and turn him on and see if everything works, man. So, man, you know the deal, man. Like, share, comment, subscribe. You know, I just wanted to put this little bit of content out, man, because this is what I've been in the studio working on, man. And I know I always tell y'all, man, don't just be in the studio, man. Be in the studio working on something. You know what I'm saying? Don't just be a producer. Be productive. You know, I be hitting y'all with my whole spew. And I don't never really show y'all, like, a lot of the stuff I do in the studio, man, when I'm not doing videos and stuff. So, because a lot of times when I'm not doing videos, man, I'm actually working on music for artists and stuff. So I really don't have time to make videos. Plus, I can't afford for that music to end up on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? So I can I only make 
YouTube videos when it's when it's feasible to make them when I'm really freed up, you know what I'm saying? But this is some of my work that I be doing in my studio, man. So here you go, I got it all buttoned back up. And uh there you go, man. It's my baby, man. Uh you know the deal. I you know me, man. I can't have no dirty equipment, so you know what I'm about to do. I'm going to put these screws in the side and tighten it on down. And uh, no, I think right here, man, I'm fixing. Yeah, I'm straightening up my vinyl on the front. I think I got a wrinkle in my vinyl when I was putting it back together, so I'm fixing my vinyl, man. You know, we can't have nothing looking shabby, man. This is the lab, baby. You know what I'm saying? I... I try to set a good example, man, for all my subscribers, man. Like, I ain't sitting up in no dirty ass studio. Nope, no, not talking about nobody, but I just don't believe in that, man. I keep everything organized, man. So whenever I want to work, I can fully work and really be productive. You know what I'm saying? Uh, my studio is strictly a studio, it's not used for nothing else. So everything, everything in my studio is studio equipment. Everything is set up in the place where it should be set up. I don't, you know, I'm not in the corner of a bedroom and nothing. Not talking about the people who are, but I came a long way from that, man. So now I take a lot of pride in my studio. I keep things nice, neat, clean, and organized. And man, that's just where I like to keep it, man. You know, and uh, here we go, man. I'm gonna show you the drive. They'll go to drive installed and stuff. You know, and I feel good about it because, like I say, everything worked, man. And at the end of the video, man, I'm going to show a few pictures of it turned on. And like I always say, man, get in that studio. Be working on something. I don't care what it is you're working on. You can be organizing your hard drives or whatever. There I am cleaning that baby up because I hate dirty equipment. But uh, you could be organizing hard drives or whatever, man, but... Don't just be a producer, be productive. Stay tuned for the end of the video, man, and peace.